Hi. I'm going to quickly talk about the concept called degrees of freedom. All right. This is kind of a weird thing, degrees of freedom. And um, first I'll tell you minimally what you need to know. If you remember nothing else about degrees of freedom for now, it is uh, some often symbolized DF is uh, equal to the number of uh, participants or the number of items you have in a data set the number of numbers you have in a pile of numbers minus one so every group is uh, every group of data is missing uh, a degree of freedom what in the world does that mean uh, let me try to explain it a little bit with this silly example here so let's say that we're uh, gonna have a data set of four we have four numbers all right and uh, let's call it X this little data set and I'm going to reveal them to you one at a time here okay the four numbers one at a time now before I do so let me make this promise to you alright what I can tell you for certain about these numbers is that they are going to sum up to 10 alright um, I'm gonna reveal them to, to you one at a time so let's talk about that first number what can that first number be are there any limitations to what the first number can be? Now let me preface this by saying that I'm opening this up to, to everything between, these numbers could potentially be anything between negative infinity and positive infinity, and they don't necessarily have to be whole numbers. Okay? So is there any limitation to what the first number that I'm about to tell you is? Can you think of any number that it just cannot be? Can it be bigger than 10? Yes, if it's bigger than 10, somewhere I've got to have one or more of the remaining numbers just simply must be negative to start to you know, counterbalance that if it's more than that. If it's a, if it's a, decimal, if it's a fractional number, then um, some other number is going to have to be fractional to have this thing subsequently wind up adding to a whole number 10. Okay, so it's going to be anything between zero, negative, I'm sorry, anything between negative infinity and positive infinity, including the number zero. So I'm going to just tell you, what, I know your dyne of anticipation here, so the first number just happens to be mm, 4. Okay? 4. All right. The next three numbers must result in this thing adding up to 10. For the second number that I'm about to show you, can you think of any number that it cannot be? Well, can it be something larger than, um, can it be larger than 6? Yes, it can be larger than six. It could be six or larger. It could be six million. It could be a billion. I could make this number. It could be negative a billion. Okay. Uh, again, I have opening up the door to all forms of number from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. So the second number is totally free to vary. It can be anything. And I'm going to say that it equals three. All right. I'm up to seven now. Two more numbers to go. I, how about the third number? Is there anything that you can think of that it just cannot be? Well, similarly to the first two numbers, those had all of the ne negative infinity to positive infinity you know, range to, to choose from. There is no limitation to what this um, third number can be. I'm going to say that it is equal to 1. All right, what am I up to now? I add up to 8. I'm up to 8. The final answer must, answer must add up to 10. I have one and only one more number to show you. Is there any freedom as to what that number can be? No, it's locked in. That number must be a 2. If it's not a 2, I have either lied to you or made a mistake, and I promised you that these would add up to 10. So that last number ha had no freedom. So the, the data set, as we talked about, had uh, one less degree of freedom, the degree of freedom were one less than the total, okay? So there were four numbers, so I had three degrees of freedom. Three of the numbers were free to vary. Now, I'm not explaining right now why this is important. Degrees of freedom, as you're going to see, is a concept that's used in statistics, often instead of just simply referring to n. Okay, I'm not going to try to explain right now why we use degrees of freedom. The sad truth is just that we do. So for now, degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1. There you go. The crazy case of degrees of freedom. See you next time.